pause now. We have some families uh, that have children that need to be blessed. And uh, from the list that I've been given, it seems like um, we will never, the church is never going out of style. <laughs> you will see what I mean in just one minute's time. So if those um, who have um, children that are going to be blessed, they'll now stand and the ushers are helping them come to the front. They're going to um, center them. Uh, come on, Sister Leah, if you would. Um, I'll help you. They, they occupied. <laughs> They weren't even looking this way, but we've got you. Uh, Leah Wiggins is going to help us today. Pastor Jay is going through a healing, so we send out our prayers to her. Amen. Um, Leah is over the God's Heritage uh, Ministry at the Calvary campus, and so she's here. She's been helping us the last two years in this effort, and so uh, they're going to get everyone space, get everyone up here, and make sure we get them even with the stage. Hey, good morning. How you all doing? Good, good, good. Y'all look good. Y'all look good. Y'all look good. They're still coming, they're still coming, so we need to go on down, we need to go on down. They're still coming, we're still coming. Everybody knows I have a thing with spaces and evenness, so thank you, thank you, brothers, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're gonna need to, just a bit, just a bit. Come on, ushers, come on, praise the Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, how are you doing? Good morning, good morning. Did you get it? All right, so, um, Leah, if you would, would you read off all the names of the uh, infants as well as their mothers and fathers who are with us or whatever we have? Uh, you'll, you'll take it from here, if you will. Good morning. Demarius A.G. Jr. And his parents are Miss Ariana Sanders and Demarius A.G. Will you please turn around so that everyone can see you? Just turn around one quick minute so everyone can see you. You can turn back around. Wonderful. Thank you. We have Diora Shone Greer. Her grand aunt, Miss Wilma Griggs, is with her. Can you turn around, please? Grace Janae Green. Her parents are Mrs. Jasmine Green and Mr. Clinton Green. Amen. Amen. Blair J. Matthews. His mother. Miss Brianna Matthews. And I'm standing with her in spirit. I'm standing with both of these. These both of my, my daughters here. Right? Okay, amen. Jackson Emmanuel Pitt. His mother, Miss Brittany Pitt. I knew Andrew Accompanied was by coming. Pastor Matthews. We have Andrew, Andrew coming here. Go ahead. You can get, you can get right on in there. I knew you'd be around. Better late than never. <laughs> All right. Zayden Darrell Taylor. His mother, Miss Latarius Taylor, and his grandfather, Terry Taylor. Carlise Amari Burrell Tucker. His mother, excuse me, her mother is Miss Anaya Burrell and Mr. Carlise Tucker. Ah, right. Fantastic. She looks beautiful. Fantastic. And we have this family, uh, Miss Brianna Williams is the mother of Jamari David Williams, Jamaica Lee Williams, and Malaysia Orame Williams. All right. Fantastic. So thank you. Um, let me say this, and we're going to pray. This is a time the Lord, I was praying about this situation this morning. And the Lord said, these are interesting times in that um, my prayer today is to release your children into this season. This season, the next 10, 15 years, I'll even say 20 years, is going to be unlike anything this earth has ever seen. And so you all have been wise to bring your children to the Lord because these seasons have nothing to do with human knowledge. In order to be successful, there's going to have to be an anointing on your household. There's going to have to be an anointing on your words. There are going to have to be seasons that God refreshes you to know what to say 
because you're going to be confronted with situations that generations before you had no confrontation. You, you, give me the word, Lord. It's going to be like you're not going to be able to go to grandma and get the right answer because grandma haven't seen what you're about to see. It's like you, 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 you can only go to one source. This is why things are happening so rapidly. Things are happening with natural conditions in the earth. Things are happening with every pillar of support in the earth, the financial pillars, the educational pillars. Everything is happening to cause crash. You're seeing racial conflict. You're seeing nations conflict with each other. You're seeing that even the educational system is not safe. The jobs are not safe. Uh, the economy is not safe. The political system is not safe. Why? God is allowing that to draw people to him as being the only source. That's that one passage that says, to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. I'm telling you, this is that season. This is that season. And so I'm releasing you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you and your child or children, into a place. It's almost like I saw there's a, a bubble of insulation where if you will get in prayer, God will tell you what to do. If you walk with him, he'll coach you every day. Um, there's, a, there's a place in God where he even supply all of the energy that you lost raising children. There's one thing to raise children, but y'all gonna have to raise children. You're gonna have to give it all you've got. And when you are pouring out, I heard the Lord say, I'm going to every night energize you again. That's what Jesus taught his disciples, didn't he? Give us this day. So I'm releasing upon you as a prophet of God, this day anointing. This day anointing, this day anointing, this day. Because we've never seen a day like this day. So Father, I thank you for this collective audience of these wonderful and beautiful lives. I thank you, Lord, for protecting them from the womb till this point in time. You've done that to show us that you have already provided for each of these families' needs. And so I stand as your servant to speak into the ears of these who have come supernatural provision. Physically, mentally, spiritually, relationally. Yes, Lord, I'll say it. You will know what to do. And so, Father, I give you praise for each of these families and each of these children. Satan, I bind your hands. The plans you may conceive will not work. These will be shielded by the anointed hedge of God wherever they go for the rest of their lives in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ, the Holy Lamb of God. And Father, I thank you that whatever is in the bloodlines that will cause a complication to your divine will and purpose being accomplished, I break it up now in the name of Jesus so that the bloodlines will be open to the influence of the Holy Spirit. I release these precious lives now into your charge in Jesus' name, and we give you the praise for long life, for the spirit of ingenuity, anointed hands, anointed minds, quick reception to technology, favor, I call it again, favor, that even if something carries on from a previous bloodline, the favor of God will untangle it 
the favor of God will demangle it. And angels will be dispatched to strengthen and encourage now in the name of Jesus. I release it in Jesus' name. And if you parents can agree, just say that I agree and I receive in Jesus' name. Now, audience, would you clap your hands and just approve of these wonderful people in Jesus' name. Go ahead, Leah, if you'd just close us out, would you please? Each of the families will receive a certificate to commemorate this day. And the certificate of dedication reads, New Life Interfaith Ministries, Incorporated, Georgia Matthews, the second senior pastor, Bessemer, Alabama, that certifies that Blair J. Matthews of New Life Interfaith Ministries, Incorporated, was dedicated to Jesus Christ on this, the 12th day of June in the year of our Lord, 2022. Signed by the officiating minister, Pastor George Matthews, and of course the parents' names are listed here. So each of you will receive this. In addition, you will receive the child's first Bible, uh, and there will be, it is engraved with your child's name in it. Also, you will receive uh, our confession, a prayer over your child's future framed. And you can pick this up at the uh, front desk at the information center at the end of service. Thank you. All right, audience, let's give them a big hand clap. And uh, you all are turning to your left and going that way. Come on, let's do that. Thank you all so much. Love you. Thank you, Leah. Good job. God bless you all. God bless you all. Thank you. Wow. While they're being seated, let me um, take an opportunity on a personal note, um, say two things. Um, my daughter obviously was in this delegation of people that were dedicated. Pastor Jay planned to stand with her. I would have otherwise stood with her. Uh, but Brianna, we love you as all the others. And uh, I would like you to just serve as a representative for those uh, single moms. Um, times have changed, things have changed a lot and we don't have any condemnation for any of the single moms. We're just here to bless you. We're just here to bless you. Um, being my daughter is not easy, I know that. <laughs> um, the expectations, but uh, you've had a great deal of courage. I've watched you over these uh, last nine, 10 months um, with not a lot of support outside from where it could have come from. But you got a family, you got a dad, you got a mom. Ain't nobody gonna leave you. Told you that, I meant what I said. Uh, and the same holds true for all of our single mothers. And I wanna say this, um, Brianna, I'm just, I don't talk about my children all the time, but she worked um, all the way throughout the process and she works here at the ministry. And I can only imagine what that really meant day to day, um, knowing that sometimes people, because of their expectations and because of the delicacy and the intricacy of this situation, probably was thinking some things and maybe you even felt that they might have said some things, but you showed tremendous courage and stamina as these, and as a type of a single mother, new mom, I encourage you to keep that stamina and all single mothers who are here, you stood bold as the prayer was going on. And uh, it's, God is with you. I'm going to tell you that God is with you all. Um, parents don't plan for this. This ain't what we expected. This is not what you set up for. But I want you to know God knows everything. And he promised that he would never leave you all. And I he, I'm here to say that today, and, and to this New Life family, I've got to tell you all, you all are a pretty um, amazing church. Uh, I, I can't tell you what it meant to see all of the outpouring. We haven't taken the opportunity to say that, but the outpouring of love uh, shown to her. I'm talking about the gifts upon gifts upon gifts. I know she had to be tired of just opening gifts. I mean, every day, day to 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 day, because you all wanted her to know 
as a church family, we are just that. We are family. And so I want to tell you all, thank you. Thank you all for being so supportive uh, of our family and uh, not, you know, trying to go get you another pastor. But, you know, you, you, you're able to see real life lived out. So there ain't nothing I can hide. <laughs> you see real life lived out. The just should live by faith. So the faith that I have to live by is the faith you got to live by, y'all got to live by, and the faith that the rest of us have to live by. Amen? So applaud yourselves. I love you all. Y'all are amazing people. So thank you so very much. I think I said everything I want to say. Pastor Jay isn't here, so as I said, she's receiving healing today. So she's been an incredible, um, unbelievable. Uh, I don't know what she's made out of. I, don't, I just don't know. I don't know what she's made out of, but uh, she's, she's at home um, receiving healing, and so we send out our love and our appreciation for her as a grandmother and um, everybody's mom. So let me say this, and I'm going to get into the message, and I'm going to have to leave you all know that. Um, next weekend at here uh, at both of our campuses, we're celebrating men, not just fathers, but manhood. So this message is from me as pastor to the women that love a man. I'm not talking to the men right now. I'm talking to the women because men sometimes are not as dutiful as they should be about plugging into things that they should plug into. So I'm talking to the ladies. Let me hear all the ladies say yes. yes. Okay, that's who I'm talking to. You're my audience. Yes, I'm in. Um, uh, next weekend is a men's celebration weekend here at New Life for our um, Calvary Resurrection and the New Life family, open to all men. There's been an exclusive buyout. Uh, our ministry have per has purchased uh, for several thousand dollars um, the Autobahn Indoor Speedway with unlimited go-karting and more. And so this is gonna be an exciting time. So ladies, if your man has not registered, uh, and they're uh, ages, young men, eight and above, okay? If they have not registered, ladies, I'm going to deputize you to make sure you go to the information center, register your mind, and tell them he got to be there this weekend because he need to be with some other men. Ah, uh, men. It's men, 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 okay? And then come early next Sunday um, for Father's Day, uh, there will be activities on both campuses here at the New Life campus. It's dubbed um, Breakfast with Dads. So there's the uh, whole latte drip food truck. Now, um, Pastor Jay showed me some, she was talking to the owner the other day. We were in a meeting and she was showing me some of the things that he was um, going to be able to make. So brothers, when you get here next week, get here early and then uh, for a uh, breakfast latte, coffees, whatever have you, and just for the fellowship. So that's going to be next Sunday um, before service, and I think he'll be here. That truck will be here after service, and there'll be another food truck over in the Calvary campus, and we'll talk about that when we get there later today. All right, so clap your hands as a transition. Let's get into the Word of God. <laughs> How many of you love your church? Your church loves you too. I'm in. All right, let's get into the word of God. Thank you, music ministry. God bless you. I receive that. Release your future into your life. God bless you. Um, thank you, uh, music ministry. We appreciate you so much. The Transformer and the Transformation. This is a special session, part three. A special session, part three, where uh, under the direction of the Lord, I'm intersecting with the teaching that I've been giving for several months now because the Lord said this is an important part, uh, an important component for believers to be able to see transformation in their lives. Overcoming the spirit of competitive jealousy. Overcoming the spirit of competitive jealousy. The topic today is the seat, S-E-A-T, the seat of jealousy. Now, I felt, um, I'm going to take a departure from my notes a bit. Uh, if they'll put on the screen, and I apologize I didn't send these passages up to those who are helping us with the digital scriptures. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 10, and then Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. All right, I'm going to move very quickly because 
Um, I'm going to show you at the beginning of this message what transformation should look like for the believer. When you're born again, Jesus moves into your human spirit. Everyone say, my human spirit. My human spirit. But that leaves two other parts of you untouched, so to speak, unchanged by the salvation process. That leaves your soul, that's your brain, that's your cerebellum, that's your thinker, your feeler, your chooser, that's the part of you that makes decisions, that's the part of you that is persuaded, it's the part of you that makes your choices unlike someone else's. So your soul, the scripture says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice. It's your physical man, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And then verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed. That word means radically changed. How does that happen? By the renewing of your mind. And so the church has been a bit reticent in that we have not taught people uh, fully enough about the importance of their soul, uh, the way they think, um, the choices you make. Um, your soul being open to revelation knowledge so that God can prepare you in this season for your next seasons. And then there's the body part of you. The physical anatomy should undergo transformation, should undergo change. Uh, your youth should be renewed like eagles. Which side? C and D? A and B? The balcony? All right, the balcony, they're waving at me. I see some, I can't tell who you are, but I see hands going up. <laughs> um, and then we haven't taught people that when you're born again, that's the first part of the process. It is not the end of the process. It is the beginning of a process. So if you're saved, thank God. But there's more that God wants to transform in you. Um, that salvation package contains an, an anointing uh, for change, for transformation in your soulish realm so that, that God can change your physical realm. That includes your body. That includes where you live. It includes how you live. It includes bills being paid supernaturally, need being met supernaturally, the right people coming into your life supernaturally, the wrong people exiting your life supernaturally. You don't have to run them off. God will just take care of it. And he'll even take care of enemies that you don't know are enemies. That's an anointing that comes in your, the physical realm of your life. We call it the quality of life. Jesus said in St. John chapter 10, verse 10, after describing what it means to be in the sheepfold, he begins that in St. John chapter 10, verse 1. He gets all the way down to now, verse 10, and he says, The thief cometh but for to steal, kill, and destroy. But I'm come that you may have life, and the Amplified Classic says, have and enjoy life to the full until it overflows. Somebody needs to teach us how to enjoy life until it overflows. <laughs> Glory to God. There won't be, we won't have a problem getting people into the kingdom of God when they see the people that are already in here enjoying life until it overflows. Amen, amen, amen. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, verse 23. Now may the God of peace sanctify you wholly, W-H-O-L-L-Y, which means completely, even your whole spirit, your whole soul, and your body be being preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 24, faithful is he that hath called you, and he will do it. So now when God transforms us, I'm going to show you a model of what that should look like. How, uh, along with that, this means that your spirit, soul, and body should be transformed. Everything about you should be changed radically, supernaturally, divinely, by the transformer, who is the Holy Spirit. Now let's put up, um, yes, they have Deuteronomy 6 and 10, that's it. And it shall be, now this is God speaking to slaves. Owned, the Israelitic people owned by the Egyptians. And God says to these slaves, I'm going to give you a picture of what transformation should look like. He says, when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, or Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities. God looks at these slaves and he says, I'm going to transform your lives so radically that I'm going to give you cities. Come on. 
And then he says, and you didn't have to build them. Because that's the number one problem with transformation. Believers are always trying to question, how shall this be? When we make confessions about millionaire status, most of you are thinking, I don't know how to become a millionaire. That's not your assignment. God said to them, I'm going to transform you. I know how it's going to be done. You don't have to know. Just follow me. Watch this now. He says, which thou buildest not. Next verse, please, if you will. He then says, and houses. Come on, say it. I receive this. Houses full of, come on, all good. I'm going to put a word in here for clarity. All kinds of good things. That means you, you're going to leave Walmart. Now, ain't nothing wrong with Walmart when you need Walmart. You may see me in Walmart. But God says there's a provision for something greater than Walmart shopping. He says, I'm going to fill it with all good things which you didn't have to feel. That's transformation. And wells digged, artesian water wells, under the ground that you didn't have to dig. Vineyards, I'm going to give these to you, and olive trees which you didn't have to plant. Now, wait a minute. God is saying, I'm going to transform these former slaves' lives to such a degree that I'm going to give them possessions they don't have to work to get. They don't have to try to figure it. They don't have to try to calculate it because I'm God. I'm going to transform them spirit, soul, and body. Now let's look at it from another perspective. Um, what did I say? Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. I'm going to have to really hurry. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. It shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Everyone saying, I'm being set on high. I'm being set on high. That means elevation and promotion. Are you making notion? Elevation and promotion, okay? That's transformation. Next verse, please. And all these blessings, everyone say blessings. blessings. Now that's, a, that's another cold word uh, God uses to describe transformation. When blessings come on people, they are transformed. They are radically changed, spirit, soul, and body. All these blessings shall come upon thee and come on, overtake thee. If thou shalt hearken, that means to listen, as well as with the intention of doing what you have heard. Hearkening is different from listening. All believers listen. Few believers hearken. Because the transformer is going to be giving you instructions. Glory to God. If you hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, that's the Holy Spirit. Next verse, please. Blessed, transformed shall you be if you're geographically located where? In the city. That's the suburbia. That's urbanized. It doesn't matter. Because the blessing is going to do what? Come up on you. And blessed shall thou be in the rural settings, in the field. Next verse, please. Blessed shall you be, this shall be the fruit of thy body. It, it, your whole body is blessed. That's what I've been telling you. And the fruit of thy ground, the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, another kind of cattle, and the flux of thy sheep. Next verse, please. Blessed shall thou be in thy basket. That's the thing that is containing uh, the things that, that you need that's, that are closest to you. So that would be like your checking account, checkbook. So he says, no longer is your checkbook going to be a wreck book. Your checkbook is going to be a checkbook. And you, I, 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 caught, a, I caught an anointing yesterday. I, I think I was leaving the Saturday service. And um, I had to stop by and get something uh, from the store. And my debit card didn't work. And it said, uh, and the lady said, the debit card didn't work. Now, a few years ago, if they had said that, there would be mass panic. <laughs> Section A or B, which, C, D. I know y'all blessed now. Y'all don't remember those days. But it, it just hit me in the store. And I said, oh, I, I had to catch myself. I quickened. I said, I know. We ain't got no problem here. See, 
And it was just that the, the machine was malfunctioning and, and, you know, got worked out and whatever have you. But I remember a point in time when I was saved and my debit card, credit card, now one of them. I remember when I was saved and nobody was teaching me and, and, and my check, I had to write the check and, and try to, see y'all don't like to testify, but when God does something for you, he's entitled to be able to use you to tell somebody else how he brought, the way he brought you out, he can also bring them out. Don't get so high minded that you have forgotten God. Wait a minute, let me come back to this. Let's stop right there. I hear you, Lord. I, I must make this clarity. Go back to where we were, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse now 11, the B part of verse 11. If you put that back up there, I know I'm working you all, uh, but you can rest. I'll still be working when, I'm le when I left here. He says, now, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. So now he's saying, when I brought you from the place where your checkbook was a wreck book, when you lost the car, when you lost the house, when you lost a child, when you lost your faith, when you lost some clothes, when you lost some friends, and when I transform you, watch what he says. Next verse, please. When I transform you, beware lest you forget the Lord which brought you out of your Egypt. In other words, he says, I'm supposed to be able to use you to testify to somebody else that just like I brought you out, I'm going to bring them out as well. Don't get smug on God. And you can't tell people where God brought you from. That'll cut down your transformation. It'll slow it down. If it wouldn't, he wouldn't have mentioned this. He said, this is a key ingredient. So I had to catch myself. I quickened in the store. Quicken, I'm old school Pentecostal. Quicken means you, you uh oh, that's quickening. I, I quickened in the store, I had to cap. Because I remember the days that if I wrote a check last night, Saturday, because somebody know what I'm talking about. You got to catch that check Monday morning and put some more money. See, nobody want to talk about that but me. But when God transformed your life, you can write that check and tell them, just go ahead and take your time or take it there now. Whatever is good. And that's what God wants, to be able to have that testimony so you can show somebody else that God is a God of transformation. He brought me out. He'll bring you out. He turned my life around. He'll turn your life around. He blessed my family. He'll bless your family. He blessed my basket. He blessed my store. He'll bless your basket. He'll bless your store. He'll have turn around for your life. Some of the reason we're not attracting people is because you're not telling what God has done. He's held up his end of the bargain. When are you going to hold up your end of the bargain? Tell people what God has done. I was down so low. I didn't think I was going to be able to make it. But God lifted up my head. God encouraged me in the night season. God spoke peace to my heart. When are you going to tell it? That's why I tell people about my parents' transition. My father passed away. And eight weeks later, after I'm preaching his service, I got to get back home and handle my mother's service. In eight weeks. But God preserved my mind. I heard him say, I will keep him, Isaiah 26. I'll keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me because he trusts in the Lord. I came to tell somebody, if you put your trust in God, he will stabilize your mind. He'll stabilize your mind. Yeah, let me say this. And he has to stabilize your mind because you need to be around to see your dynamic future. You've got to be here to see it. Hallelujah. And there's some enemies that God's going to keep alive so they can see God raise you up. <laughs> Woo, 
glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People who said you couldn't. People who said you wouldn't. People who said you weren't of the right ilk. People who said because of poor choices you made, you destroyed your future. But I heard the Lord say, I will restore the years. Not just the moments, the minutes, and the days and the months, but the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm, the locust, the grasshopper, whatever kind of poor choices you made, God says, I'll restore the years back to you. I'll transform your life. I love him because he's a God of transformation. The old people in my old experience said he will pick you up and turn you around and plant your feet on solid ground. I learned that, that he will pick you up. I've learned that he will turn you around. They told me in my old experience to the utmost, Jesus saves. To the utmost, Jesus saves. Led into that, I have heard the joyful sounds. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. To the utmost, Jesus saves. Spread the tidings all around. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. And he saves completely. Spirit, soul, and body transforms completely. Spirit, soul, and body. I feel like I can pack this one up today. <laughs> now notice this back over here. To, so don't forget it. Everyone say, I will not forget the Lord and his benefits. These young mothers, that's why I'm taking time with them because I want them to tell some other young mothers. I was on that track. I had to go through that. See, some of you have been there, but you won't talk about it. Because you want us to think you, you weren't on that track. But inside your mouth is a power to transform some other young mother's life. That's one thing about being a pastor. You can't hide because your life is in a fishbowl. So I really don't have a choice. You got to see me live it out in real time. And I'm just trying to encourage someone else. The thing that Satan intended to destroy you might just be your stepping stone. It might just be the thing that elevates you. It may just be the thing that makes you different from someone else. It may be the thing that when you walk in the room, people say the atmosphere just changed. It's something that was born out of my relationship with God Almighty. I tell people all the time, an anointing changes atmospheres. When a man or woman is anointed, it changes the atmosphere. It is born out of a relationship. Worship is born out of a relationship that you have with the Lord. You try to come in here and be quiet, but your hands go up when you think of the goodness. I don't know who I'm talking to today. You think about how many times he brought you out. The way he made ways for you. Things you didn't qualify for, but God made it work for you. Out of those relationships come worship. When those doctors told me I had, in, I had a very, very uh, difficult cancer that was in my body. And they told me that, that this cancer, son, 
uh, if you don't make some decisions very quickly, it's, it's going, it, it can potentially affect you and your future. And I think about from time to time how much I didn't want to be in that situation. But for, what God, for whatever reasons, I found myself there. But in the midst of that, I don't think David wanted to fight a bear. I don't think David wanted to have to face off with a lion. And then ultimately, I don't think he just wanted to fight Goliath. But it was in his destiny. But when he checked off the list, he said, what shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits unto me? When you go through things with God, God isn't allowing it to destroy you, but God allows it to give you an introduction to his benefit package. When God starts building your life with his benefits, things change all around you. You know that you can trust God. You know that God is dependable. You know that God is reliable. You know that God is holding your hand. Yea, though I walk ah, through the valley of the shadow of death, I know one thing, God is with me. His rod and his staff, they cover me. He'll be with me at all times. When you walk through those valleys and God is with you, it builds a relationship. You'll say to God in the midnight hour, God, I don't know what's happening to me. But one thing I know, you will never leave me. And since you're not going to leave me, I'm never leaving you. Never leaving you. Come on, y'all. I'm all over the place now. So you read the 28th chapter, verses 1 through 14, and you'll see another picture of transformation. I'm just trying to tell you, it's, a, it's supposed to impact your entire life. It's like you walking through landmines. I received that release your future into your life. It's like you walking through landmines and nothing explodes around you. you. You got all kinds of things coming against you. But God is with you. God is for you. <laughs> I was looking at some of the people in the lineup and uh, I looked at one couple and, you know, miscarriage after miscarriage after miscarriage. And, 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 and I can't tell you how many times this has happened to God be all the glory in our ministry where doctors said families couldn't have children. And we prayed for them. And God opened up the canals children came I'm trying to just tell you that when God is with you he transforms your whole life glory to God let me see if I can just drop one or two things here I don't know where I am in this message right now okay uh, but there are times when the Lord takes a message because he needs to talk to someone and I'm at the place in my life I don't have anything to prove. I don't care what people think about me. So I just want to be used. Just want to be used. Ha. The Lord says to me the other night, and I tried to type it the way he said it. He said, George, tell the people one of the greatest hindrances to my desire and plan to transform their lives into their supernatural beings, body, soul, and spirit, is the unconquered spirit of jealousy. And then I heard him come behind that quickly. I received that and release your future into your life. And I heard the word 
comparative. Now, the reason I had to show you these two passages, the one from Deuteronomy 6, chapter 10, uh, chapter 6, verse, verses 10 through 12, and then Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 14, was so that you can see what the transformation in our lives should look like as a picture, as a model, and then see what you're forfeiting. See, you can be alive and not be transformed. Amen. Saved, not transformed. Love Jesus and not transformed because the transformation should look like cities that you didn't acquire. Houses filled with good things that you didn't fill. Vineyards planted and you're reaping and you're harvesting from the prophets, but you didn't plant the vineyards. Wells running that you didn't dig. Blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when you go in, blessed when you're transformed everywhere, transformed in your basket, transformed in your, in, your, in your store. That's your checking account, that's your savings account, your 401k, that's your, well, I don't have investments, you're about to get some. You're about to get some. See, that's what salvation is. It's a, it's a total package. It's spirit, soul, and body. It's everywhere you go, you're transformed. Now, so God says the thing that limits him from having access to those kinds of transformations is when believers um, enter into this place of jealousies, jealous of people, envious over their possessions. And then add it to that, these, the spirit of comparisons, competitions. Now, this is where it gets personal because this is something that happens cerebrally. Don't nobody know for real in my best grammar. Don't nobody but you know. Don't nobody know who you really don't like because you can smile in their face and all the time you want to take their place. Those sanctified deacons called it back. Come on, y'all talking to me now. See, there's this little integral part between the spirit and God's completion in your spirit and the bridge, your soul, that hampers what comes out in your natural quality of life. And if competition or comparisons or jealousies are in your soul, those limit transformation from radiating and emanating from your born-again spirit. And there are many people who have never dealt with this. I, when the Lord first began talking to me about it and said, I want you to teach this, George, <clears throat> he said, this, this message, if people will receive it, will explain why so many people have had limited results in their lives for years because they've looked at someone else when they should have been looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of their faith. They were measuring themselves by someone else rather than measuring the thing that God has for them. Uh, let's do this very quickly. I received that. Um, Matthew 13, 44 through 46 tells us that there's a treasure inside of the lives of every believer and of every believer and God saves us to get the field that, that's your life because he knows that he has hidden a treasure in every person every person has treasures inside of them and then he says in, Ma in Matthew 28 19 from the Amplified Classic that there's something that has to be discipled in people they have to be taught after they're saved they have to be discipled to understand that transformation should be normal it should be happening every day. It should be emanating and radiating from all three parts of your being. And then John 16, 13, Jesus in the Last Supper with his disciples is talking to them. Lord, I hear you. And he said, I'm going to release the third person in the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, and he's going to reveal to you your futures. 
So God takes upon him the presumption that every believer should understand that once you're born again, God is not finished with you, but God now focuses on your future, your ordained future that has contained within it treasures. Then Isaiah 51 uh, chapter 51, verses 1 and 2, tells us that we were mined from a quarry. That's a play on words to tell us that the treasure inside of you has to be mined. Like natural diamonds in their natural state have to be mined. The debris has to be separated from the brilliance of the diamond. Then the diamond has to be cut. They tell me that I think a perfectly cut diamond has 32 facets, windows in the stone that God can only make. And there's, there are diamonds inside of you that God has made. And now he wants to put you through a process to get all of the chaff off so that he can mine the diamond inside of you. So we looked at it. Jacob talks about this in the 32nd chapter of Genesis. Um, verse 10, he says, um, I left home and I had nothing but a walking stick. He says, but now God has blessed me. God has transformed me. And so that what was inside of me is now two large armies. All of the time, I only had a walking stick. But now God is in, has manifested himself inside of me so that my inner man has now produced to my outer man. See, that's transformation. Amen. I've told you that competitive jealousy uh, causes us to lower our standards from the divine to the false. And it corrupts images that God has of us. It corrupts the internal image, the picture of, of who God sees you as being. God sees you. He told Israel, he said, you, you're really in the natural, you're slaves. But I see you as city owners. I see you as homeowners. I see your home filled with good things. I see you out of debt. I, I see you blessed in your field. I see you, I see you, uh, I, I see you being a lender. I, I don't see you as a borrower. He said, and I'm going to work. I'm going to dispatch the Holy Spirit until he begins to transform your life so that all of this that's inside of you now is disengaged and it comes and manifests on the outside of you. When I look at this church, people say, Pastor, you go too hard. And uh, you, you need to take, no, no, because they don't know what I know. I, I get the, the wisdom of that, I, I, please, and I understand that. But when I talk to you, I don't know who's here. See, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking to the numbers. I'm talking to the individual. Because I know something's inside of you that eyes have not seen. I know something's inside of you that ears have not heard. I know there's something inside of us that has never entered into the human heart. But God reveals them. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. But God reveals them into your spirit. That, see, when I'm talking to you, I, I'm, 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 I'm talking from the premise that there's an anointing that will produce. There's an anointing that will shift. There's an anointing that will change. There's an anointing that will wake up something. That when you walk out of those doors, you'll say, I, I, I'm not who I used to be. I, there's, there's, there's seeds of greatness inside of me that no man has ever yet seen. George, you've got to close. Competitive jealousy urges me to compare my clothes, my house, my financial position, or my ministry with others. Competitive jealousy drives me to compare myself with someone else. You see, when that happens, you miss the someone that God has in mind for you. Because you're overwhelmed with someone else. It always provokes me to compete for honor, favor, position, power, authority, and even influence. Here a few terms. Competitive jealousy turns us into small letter G gods of self-worship. Worshiping who you are now. Worshiping your past. 
Worshiping your family's limited status. Worshiping your income, your education. Watch this, what you could do. And see, when you worship what you can do, you nix what God only can do. A few hand claps over there. It, this competitive jealousy is an attempt to perfect ourselves according to a self-made plan of what we think is right. See, you don't know the man inside. You just know the man in the mirror. Come on, Mike. And it was, it was a good song. Thank you, Michael, for it. But there's something stronger. There's someone stronger than the man in the mirror. There's an inner man. There's an inner man. There's a, there's, there's a spirit man who is strong as God, who is as knowledgeable as God, who is as fierce as God, who has more courage than the outer man. The inner man can walk through fire and not be burned. We saw it with Shadrach, y'all not talking to me. Meshach and Abednego, the king was focused on the outer man, but what he didn't know, there was an inside man. I just have to end here. I, I said I was gonna end this today, and this is gonna be it. And I was gonna get back on my course, but I'm, I'm all over the place, so I have to put, have to let the Lord tell me how to put this back together. But let me just do this. Did y'all get anything today? Or please tell me to get something. Okay. How do I know if I'm experiencing competitive jealousies? Um, you can check this out at your own time. The inability to speak favorably about someone else. 37 and 4, the book of Genesis, chapter 37, verse 4. The Bible says that Joseph's brothers could not speak peaceably. That word meant that they were so disturbed by God advancing him that they could no longer have good words about him. So who is it in your life that you can't compliment? Talk George Matthews. Who is it in your life? Here's a second indication that you cannot, your arm won't let you give them nothing. You can't sew into them. You see, your inner constitution, if your inner man is strangled, by competitive jealousy, he will not allow you to give into someone's life whom you're jealous of. Can't do it. Cannot do it. You can see him on fire. Y'all know the rest of that. <laughs> your grandmother told you. Ask your grandmother. You cannot pray for them. Anybody in your prayer life you ever been, you, <laughs> the Lord said, pray for so-and-so. I will not. <laughs> Jonah didn't want the Ninevites saved. Historically, they had raped and pillaged the Israelitic people, historically. And then God raised up Jonah. He said, now, you have an inner man message that will change the whole city. He said, I want them to go to hell. <laughs> I want every last one of them to burn slowly on rotisserie <laughs> in hell and so he's got to go all through all these changes until the end he says God give me one more chance and the scripture says Nineveh was a three day journey and God said and Jonah says to God if you get me out of this great fish and out of because he said out of the belly of hell I prayed and, and, and God says, okay, deal. And the fish vomits Jonah out, and in a day and a half, 
Jonah cuts the time off the trip, preaches a message, and the entire city turns to God. What was all that in there to tell you? When there's a, a, a rivalry spirit that is rivaling with God, you can't pray for people. I know it gets quiet right here because, see, this is where it gets real. Well, I don't hate them, yeah, but do you have that old funny feeling? C, C-section, C-section, yeah. I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it, but it's something about them. Yeah, y'all know that. It's something about them I just can't. See, this is a message for all of those that you've called heifers. All the heifers in your directory, can you pray for them? See, when you get to the place that you can pray for the heifers and say, Lord, bless them. I know it's something she just don't know. When I get to that place, I'm, I'm opening the canal where God can transform me because in my heart, I'm clear. Okay, okay, okay. Um, let's just do this and I'll end. Lord, Jesus, I receive that and release your future in your life. And God's going to turn some things around for you. You just stay with him. He's got time on your calendar that God's going to turn the things around for you. Uh, First Corinthians, just be faithful to God. First uh, Corinthians chapter two, verse twelve. And I, I'm, 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 I'm gone. Lord Jesus, Lord have mercy. I wish I had two hours on both campuses today. Lord Jesus. All right. Now, now we have received not the spirit of the world. So this is writing to who? The church in Corinth. So these were believers. So this means that every believer has a choice to make. You can receive the spirit of the world, which is the spirit of competitive jealousies or comparisons. This receive not means this is an act of your volition. You have to be able to recognize this spirit and say, I don't receive this. You see, um, there are ministers who are better than me at doing my craft. Now, y'all don't supposed to just jump on that real quick. <laughs> y'all supposed to say, no, Pastor, there's nobody better. There's nobody better. <laughs> Let me say it, okay? Uh, and some of you are like, yeah, I know, because I watch them all on YouTube, and, and, and these, I, I really want to be in a church right now. If I, if I was living in a city, that's where I would be. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I already know that. But the point is, I can't so much focus on what God is doing in them so that it now starts limiting my perception of that which God wants to do in me. See, that's the spirit of the world that will force a minister to compare himself or herself with another ministry, another church, another ministry gift. See, some of you ladies, you... You, you find yourself, and I don't mean to pick on you, please. This is not a sexual statement. Uh, it just happens in my counseling experience more often in women, females, than it does in males. Because on this subject, men, men simply don't care. He can look like he eight months pregnant and still be trying to holler at you. Hey. Well, hey. Can I ride with you? Now, his car right there, but can I ride with you? Bold. And you got to really take him to task. And he's like, he eight months pregnant. And you have, you 15 pounds overweight in your own mind, and you think nobody wants you. And I just came to tell you, somebody wants that 15 pounds. Extra. Somebody. If you were 15 pounds less, they wouldn't. 
You, you, you rock it. And they wait in their car to see you get out. Just to see it all. They're waving at me back there. See, that, that, that spirit of comparison will have you not identifying the trait that God has placed in you. How do you know that's the right model? We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, two spirits either of which can possess the believer. Y'all not, y'all not shouting me down right there. Either of which. Now watch what he says. When you receive the spirit which is of God, then and only then will you know the things he's freely given you. As long as you focused on somebody else's gifts, talents and abilities, you'll never realize the transformation God has on tap for you. There's some zones that only you can walk in. There, there are keys that God has given you that will only unlock doors that he has set for you to open. But while you're ogling someone else's keys, you'll never unlock your doors. God inside welled up because of the ceiling that you've set by evaluating yourself with the standard of someone else. And it's been your problem for years and it's blocked transformation. But if you get over this one, God says, now I, I, I'm able to lift you and elevate you and put you in a place now because you're realizing it wasn't that person's comparison that did it. It's God. Hallelujah. Come on, join me on your feet. Let's pray. Let's pray. Oh, glory. Lift your hands and say this with me. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Come on, really say it. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I receive your word today. I receive your word today. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Whomever it is. Whomever it is. That is separating me. That is separating me. From the transformation. From the transformation. Oh, Lord. Hold on. The Lord said there are some people who... Here, hearing me today, as a child, this root sprang up in you. you. You started comparing yourself with other children your same age and with their experiences, the things that they were exposed to that you didn't get, opportunities they had that you didn't have. But I'm just here to say, as a servant of God, that's the spirit of the world. Receive now the spirit of the living God. And you'll begin to know the things which are freely given you from God. Things that will cause wealth to have to say yes every time. Things that will make houses show up and, 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 and artesian wells or crafts show up and city connections show up because of an anointing that God has crafted just for you. And when you get this, you'll be able to walk with your head up every time. Shoulders square. This might not be my season, but I have a season. <laughs> This not, might not be my time, but I got a time. You better know it. <laughs> now say this, Jesus, Jesus I, accept you into my heart I accept you into my heart as Lord, as Lord and, Savior. and Savior. And I thank you for directions, you for directions. That, speak that speak to me and to my purpose, and to my purpose which I receive by faith now. 
In Jesus' name. name. Clap your hands and give him praise. I love you all. Thanks for coming. minister of God's manifold blessing of God. And so as we prepare to get ready to get into our announcements, I just want you to think about the goodness of God and just the energy it takes for the man of God to preach the word with such vigor and such passion. Put your hands together again for him as he departs the facility headed to a to CRCC for another service. Amen. Amen. So at this time, uh, Ms. Sperlin is going to share with us some announcements and I will share some additional things about our graduation in just one moment's time. Please bear with us. It'll only take us just a few minutes. Good morning. Mm -hmm. The announcements for today for June 2022, employment opportunities await at the CRCC, the TLC, and the New Life Christian School of Excellence. Openings available for full and part-time preschool and elementary teachers. For more, for more information, contact either church. We can't wait to see you at the Life for Student Ministry. Join us on the first and second Sundays, or if you are attending the CRCC campus, meet us on the second and fourth Sundays. Men, it's your time. You all ready? Next weekend, the New Life, New Life Interfaith Ministries and CRCC are celebrating men and fathers. All the events for the Friday golf tournament are full, but don't panic. All the events for Saturday are still open. So join us Saturday for the Superman bike ride, an unlimited high-speed indoor go-karting, axe throwing, and more at our exclusive buyout of Audubon Indoor Speedway. And on Sunday, make sure you're here early, there will be a food truck to serve all men uh, with breakfast sandwiches, hot lattes, teas, iced coffee, and pastries, and a signature homemade vegan cinnamon roll. Hmm. And for the CRCC, join after church on the yard for an array of delectable ice cream treats provided by Mario's ice cream truck. All offices and summer programs will be closed on Monday, June the 20th, in celebration of June 10th. Pastor Matthews will be ministering at Rebirth Christian Fellowship, Pastor Doug Taylor, on Thursday, June 23rd at 7 p.m. for the 2022 Faith Refresher Conference. The church is located at 723rd Avenue Northwest in Birmingham. Amen. Put your hands together for um, the announcements. Uh, and don't forget, again, as Ms. Sperlin was saying, uh, this Saturday is going to be a very insightful time for men. So if you get the opportunity, please, 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 please participate uh, at the Audubon. We've rented that facility, so we're expecting a huge turnout for those of you that are available. Be sure to come to that particular event uh, this upcoming Saturday. Now, for the time we have remaining, and I'll be brief, but we cannot go because we'll be remiss without acknowledging our graduates. So go ahead and put your hands together for our graduates on the front end. And we have 13 graduates that we are going to recognize. Uh, and as this ministry seldomly does in most, if not all occasions, sow seed into good ground. And so we believe as a ministry here at New Life Interfaith uh, Ministries in Calvary Resurrection Christian Church, that it is due and befitting to properly sow into the lives of graduates for their many accomplishments and matriculation through various uh, sundry levels of education. So with that having been said, we're going to start out with Mr. Peyton Lorenz Bethune. And if you are here, please come forward as I recognize uh, Mr. Uh, Bethune's institution of graduation, which is Minor High School. He's received his diploma, and he's also... Um, receiving a scholarship from uh, the greatest fraternity in the world, Alpha Phi Alpha Sorority Incorporated. <laughs> Had to put that part in there. Uh, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Scholarship, AAMU Heritage Scholarship, as well as the uh, Outstanding Achievement Award in Choral Performances. Pardon me, I apologize. Uh, Outstanding Leadership Award in Stud Company, and then he's also the recipient of Leadership Award in Stud Company. 
and the Nora Reed Hearing Service Award, the Louise Burroughs Service Award. And so put your hands together for this gentleman's accomplishment. And if he's here, uh, you can come forward. If he's not, we'll move right to the next participant that has graduated. Uh, and that name of the second person is Miss Sanaya Brooks. Is Sanaya Brooks, are you here? Sanaya is a graduate of Gardendale High School, and some of these participants are uh, watching with us virtually and online, so you can come to the ministry or we'll mail these checks to you. We have your address. But Mrs. Brooks is a graduate um, of High School of Gardendale. She's an honor graduate, and she also graduated with a 3.6 GPA with the completion of an EMT class at Bevel State, uh, and she also uh, is a recipient of uh, various and sundry particular scholarships, one of which is from the uh, Delta Kappa Delta High School. Uh, she's a third year member in that particular entity. So put your hands together for Mrs. Brooks once again. And then thirdly, we have Miss Ashlyn Hill, who is a graduate of the University of Alabama at Birmingham. And that's where she's going to attend, pardon me. But the degree received thus far is from high school. And so Mrs. Hill, is going to uh, come forward. Put your hands together for Miss Hill. Awesome, awesome, yes. And she's a UAB Honors um, College, and she's also on the Blazer Presidential Scholarship and the A Honor Roll, so that's a, a, an amazing accomplishment. She has several sundry uh, merit-based scholarships, uh, which include, but not limited to, Texas Second Team All-Stars, and she's also the Student of the Year, and you can tell just by her countenance, she's a very kind person. So she has a Kindness Leadership Award. That is Miss Ashlyn Hill. Put your hand together for Mrs. Ashlyn Hill. Fourthly, we have Mrs. Gabrielle Nicole Odom. And Mrs. Odom is a graduate of Hoover High School where she got her diploma. And so we are believing God for great and wonderful things coming out of the life of Mrs. Gabrielle Odom. Please put your hand together for Mrs. Odom. And then fifthly, we have the graduate by the name of Mrs. London Taylor Ward. This is T. Ward's daughter. Everybody put your hand together for T. Ward's daughter. Another faithful member here at this church. Um, she received her high school diploma from Vestavia Hills School and she's also the recipient of many scholarships, awards, and special recognitions such as the President of Minority Achievement Council, Captain of the Women's Varsity Track Team, and so she's got quick feet like her father, I'm sure. So that is Mrs. Uh, London Taylor Ward. Put your hands together for Mrs. Ward one last time. And then sixthly, we have uh, Mr. Kyle Brian Wright, who is a graduate of Thompson High School. He received a high school diploma. And listen to this, uh, among his list of scholarships, awards, and special recognition, he has a $10,000 academic scholarship, and he's an A honor roll student. So put your hands together for Mr. Kyle Brian Wright. And then our seventh graduate, as we come to a hurried close, is Mr. Aaron Smith, uh, Qualon Smith, pardon me. Uh, and he's a graduate of Shelton State Community College, with an associate's degree, and he also has a basketball scholarship. So we are very excited about his graduation. And then as our eighth participant um, in graduation is Miss Maya C. Owens. And Mrs. Owens is a graduate uh, of the University of Alabama. So put your hands together for Mrs. Owens. And in the fall, she will begin working towards a master's in biology at the University of Kentucky. And she's also a recipient of the uh, Lyman T. Johnson Fellowship and Teachings Assistant, as well as the Department of Biology at the uh, Schumer Summer Fellowship. That is Ms. Naya, Maya, pardon me, Owens. Put your hands together. And then our ninth candidate for graduation is uh, none other than the incomparable I say incomparable because he's a fine young man. I love this young man. Mr. Carrington Douglas Wyatt, my big brother, son. Put your hands together for Carrington Wyatt. He's a graduate for the University of Alabama. You know, he's always fresh and clean. I told him it was one mistake he made. He plays capital, but I let that go. That's all right. We'll, we'll let him slide with that. <laughs> Good young man. Love you. Say that again. 
He said, that's right, he's getting an MBA at UAB. Just put your hands together on that. That is awesome. Such a fine young man, very good young man, very good, respectful young man. Our ninth candidate, if my accuracy of numbers are good, is Victoria Brasher. And Mrs. Brasher is a graduate of Jacksonville State University, or JSU. And among her list of scholarships, awards, and recognitions, she graduated, notice this, summa cum laude. Summa cum laude. Uh, she's a recipient of the, uh, she's a Phi Kappa Phi Honor Society, and she's also in the Sigma Theta uh, Honor Society. So put your hands together for Ms. Brasher. Our next candidate is Mrs. Connie Alicia Watson. Mrs. Watson is a graduate of uh, Liberty University where she received a master's degree and among her many lists of scholarships awards and recognition She's a graduate. Uh, she graduated as cum laude. So put your hands together for Mrs. Watson Our next candidate for graduation is Mr. Terry Lamar Watson who is who received his master's degree from Florida Institute of Technology and he's also a member here at New Life Interfaith Ministry. So please put your hands together for Mr. Watson. And last but not least, we have Miss Diamond J. Wren, who is a graduate of Miles Law School where she received her Juris Doctorate degree. She's also a member here of New Life Interfaith Ministries and Calvary Resurrection Christian Church. So we're excited for all of these graduates. Please uh, join me with one final round of applause for all of these graduates and what they have done academically. We're just so blessed to have everyone to participate today. Now, as we bring our uh, service to a close, we want to go ahead and dismiss our virtual audience. We want to thank you on behalf of NLIM and CRCC for joining us today. And my lovely wife has been such a great help. Put your hands together for my wife. She's done such a great job. She look and smell good, too. <laughs> you don't get five kids just looking at them. Praise the Lord. But uh, to my left, we have uh, Section A. If you would, please stand. Thank you.